Welcome to the Report from Tucker Mountain. Tonight we're going to do a little film review, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk about the new film from Dennis Villeneuve, June 2. Stick around and listen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about June 2. Um, and I guess, you know, we can talk about June 1 as well, because June 1 and 2 make up, you know, his adaptation of the first uh, novel by Frank Herbert, the famous uh, June novel uh, that is one considered probably the greatest science fiction novel of all time. It's also considered the inspiration for Star Wars, which it pretty much is, if you actually know the novel and know the basic plotline. Star Wars is quite similar to it, and it rips off uh, many various elements, so it's considered almost the, you know, great achievement of science fiction. And and, you know, the new Dune film is quite fantastic. I was a fan of the f Dune Part 1, and Dune Part 2 continues in the same direction. And um, I wanted to sort of talk about, you know, I guess it's kind of resonance for the uh, the new right, for um, the dissident right, obviously, which this report from Tiger Mountain is a part of. Um, one of the interesting things about uh, Dune is that it is essentially about uh, a white messiah. Um, Paul Atreides, uh, who has various other names that he's called uh, throughout the uh, um, you know the book and the film he's called uh, Paul Mordeeb that's like his name he assumes when he goes to uh, June and he's also called um, Lysain Al Gaib which is like the Fremen's name for like their Messiah um, and it's also called the Kwisatz Haderach which is um, the Bene Gesserit name for the Messiah now the Bene Gesserit are a group of um, I guess you would describe them as right-wing Catholic witches or nuns who are essentially involved in a breeding project to bring about, you know, um, their version of the Messiah called the Kwisatz Haderach, who they believe they will control because they've con they've basically controlled through eugenics the bloodlines of the various royal houses that are portrayed in uh, in June. Um, uh, Lady Jessica has Paul Atreides against the wishes of the Bene Gesserit because the Bene Gesserits are only supposed to give birth to daughters until the time is right. Um, and obviously she disobeys the commands of the Bene Gesserit and she gives birth to Paul. And, you know, uh, Paul Atreides goes to June with his father, Duke Leto, and then there's this whole sort of civil war and um, the Harkonnens betray the Atreides and kill the Atreides family. And uh, Paul flees into the desert and joins up with the Fremen. The Fremen are sort of um, desert people that essentially are standing for the Muslims. So it's really a kind of Lawrence of Arabia story, you know. Uh, it's about how a white saviour kind of unites the Arab people. So, you know, it's kind of interesting politically because obviously with this whole Gaza situation, it's, you know, I mean, um, and obviously the way the Muslim world is united against Israel, it's, it makes one think, are the Harkonnens, is Israel the Harkonnens? I don't know, maybe it's meant to be. Um, you know, so it's very interesting. Um, so, you know, it has that going on, but... In a strange way, it's sort of a critique of power, though. Like, you know, uh, if I could say what is it about, um, I would say June is about the terror of power. Because um, Paul Atreides sort of has to become uh, what he's fighting. You know, like, the Harkonnens are portrayed uh, as this greedy, psychotic, um, you know, Eastern European people who are just almost inherently evil and um, destructive and uh, murderous and um, duplicitous, um, you know, and in a way, Paul Atreides Mordeeb, the Quisit Tadarak or whatever you want to call him, he has to become sort of like that. And he uses the Fremen and he, uh, you know, he, he, he leads them in a holy jihad, that rings a bell, doesn't it, ladies and gentlemen, um, against the uh, Harkonnens and he essentially seizes the Emperor so he seizes the Empire and becomes um, the Emperor himself. But one of the things that happens between, and obviously this is not covered in the new film, but it happens in the novel, is that um, he becomes, uh, you know, essentially a genocidal maniac and he kills approximately 70 billion people between June 1 and June 2. And in June 2 he talks about it. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really, you know, I mean... Is Paul, you know, Atreides uh, an, an anti-hero? And I think to some extent he is. So I think um, Frank Herbert is making a comment on that. And I think um, he's also examining, you know, the various um, nexuses of power. There's like, the, you know, the Spacing Guild who require the spice, which is mined on June 
for space travel. Obviously, this represents oil. Um, the Fremen stand in for Muslims. I mean, there's a lot of resonance with what's going on uh, at the moment, but the film is a kind of warning about power. And I think it is something that is interesting. Um, uh, and that to some extent, to defeat your enemy, you almost have to become like your enemy. And also it is revealed, uh, obviously spoilers in this, it's also revealed that the Baron Harkonnen is Paul Atreides' grandfather. He's the father of... Um, Lady Jessica. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, Dennis Villeneuve has done a spectacular job bringing this all to life. He shot it, I think, in, you know, um, the United Arab Emirates and another um, desert country uh, near that. And, um, you know, he's done a great job. Um, it's a fascinating um, uh, evocation of the novel and uh, it's got the uh, approval of Brian Herbert, who's the son of Frank Herbert, who's also gone on to write about 10 or 15 June novels himself. So uh, if you're fans of the book, um, I was a fan of the original David Lynch film, which you should all see, so make sure you go check that out because that puts it all into about two and a half hours. And June 1 and 2 is about six hours long or five and a half hours. So, you know, it's it's for June fans, this is heaven. And, um, you know, uh, I saw it on the big screen and I think I want to go see it in IMAX, which is apparently an even better way to see it. So go check it out. Uh, it gets the highest rating, but also reflect on what it says about power and also how it, um, you know, know, uh, plays into the politics of the new right, the alt-right, the dissident right, whatever you want to call it. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen, that's my June 2 review. Check it out.